Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for you to bring you episode number 12 of season 2 of our Leicester City career mode. Now today we've got three more games for you guys and the, the theme of today is very much fixture congestion. As you can see in the background we'll be playing Watford in the first game, a week's break then to Burnley but then one day's break to Norwich and one day's break to Bournemouth which will be the first game of next episode. So. We have got a lot on our plate in terms of lots of games in a very short period of time. Over the Christmas period, over the festive period, there's always a lot of games in the Barclays Premier League. And true to form, it is that way here as well. In the background though, you are seeing training and Briel Limbolo has gone up yet again, this time to an 81 overall. And this will be the last episode where he's trained before January, where I'll try and train some of the more neglected uh, members of the team uh, myself. In the background then, you're seeing the second slot of training from this episode, in which no one really goes. Up. I think uh, Mares goes up on his ball control and Jahovic is uh, being trained as well whereas Tarajai was trained in the first one. Obviously last episode Tarajai was the main man. You know he got us into the semi-finals of the Capital One Cup with a last last like last gasp extra time winner against Tottenham so um he's rewarded in some sense with a place on the bench alongside Francois Comano uh, coming onto the bench to replace Pione Sisto who's actually suspended for this game as you can see there was Mbolo and Benyadere up front for this game no Jamie Vardy in the squad but the player to watch out for is Patrick Herman yet again 14 appearances so far this season and two goals in the Barclays Premier League I think that's added to another three or four in uh, all competitions so um He's currently sat on about six in all competitions. And we will get the first chance of this game against Watford at Vicarage Road with Fukrat and Mazuaku putting the ball into the box and headed away by Miguel Leon. But as you can see, Bruno Perez with the strike and it is saved by Marcelo Groa in the Watford goal. Now, obviously, we've got bad memories of Watford from last season where we lost the game thanks to a stunner from Diamante. Uh, we lost the game 2-1. We'll be looking to uh, put that right today. Uh, against Watford but as you can see they had a chance there going over the bar after we had another chance as well um, with someone I, I was brilled on Lembolo uh, Riyad Mahrez there skipping inside passing the ball to Mbolo he gets it back off the Swiss uh, striker but it's blocked by the Watford defender Bel Kalem and Mahrez down this right hand side is having a really influential part to play in this game skipping past three players but again a fantastic one on one save from the Watford goalkeeper to deny the Algerian a fantastic solo goal we are in the second half and Riyad Mahrez again making things happen this time he's brought down by Gerardo the Watford midfielder and we have won ourselves a penalty and this is the first time we won a penalty in quite some time we had a massive flurry of them at the start of this season but I think this is the first penalty in about six episodes and it's an opportunity for Riyad Mahrez to get his fifth goal of the season he steps up and smashes it into the top left corner we lead 1-0 with 15 minutes to go the Watford goalkeeper gets in the right way but Riyad Mahrez gets our goal to put us 1-0 in front and now celebrates with his winger partner Patrick Herman Ben Yedair and Bolo and Arnold over to celebrate too. We do deserve the lead, I think. Watford really with only one major chance in this game so far in comparison to a few half chances, it has to be said, for us. But Troy Deeney muscling his way past the Leicester defence and finding Matias Rodriguez. Fantastic save from Schmeichel and headed away at the last gasp there by Nicholas and Kulu. A really, really important header. Otherwise, Troy Deeney would have had an empty net to nod the ball into. And that means we do keep hold of our lead and we win the game 1-0. There you can see the ratings. Arnold with a 7.7, .7, but Riyad Mahrez, the best player on our team, it was actually the Watford goalkeeper, uh, Grower, who got man of the match. But some good ratings across the board, it has to be said, for our players. And um, a 1-0 um, a win, not the most extravagant of wins, but it's a win uh, nonetheless. So moving on from that, and um, obviously we're getting towards the end of December, which means naturally we're getting towards the start of January and that means that we're getting towards the transfer window in the background you are seeing some players that have been scouted by my scouts in terms of pre-contract agreement players or players whose contracts are expiring in the near future that we can pick up for free in January who will then arrive to us at the start of season three and if you saw any players in that list there that you would like me to sign drop it in the comment section as well as any players at all that you would like me to sign I will have a proper question of the day later on for you guys regarding that but um, um, yeah, if there's any players you want me to sign, drop it in the comments section. Nevertheless, we're now getting into the second game of today's episode against newly promoted Burnley at the King Power Stadium. There you can see a squad in the background with fatigue likely to be an issue today. And Burnley being the most winnable game out of the two uh, via, you know, against Burnley and Norwich. We've got a lot of players coming into the side. Shinji Okazaki, Sisto, Inla, drink waters into the side. More read of old Jeffrey Schlupp. Lots of players, lots of changes. And one of those changes, Jamie Vardy, is cutting inside. I wanted to pass it back to Shani Tarajai, but it's found Pione Sisto, the other winger, on the other side of the area. And somehow, Burnley did not clear the ball. I was actually wanting to uh, sort of cut it back 
to an on-rushing winger being Shani Tarajai, and it's ended up going across the entire box for some reason. It's found Sisto, and somehow he has ended up scoring. Really poor defending, though, from Burnley, and we have a lead here, a 1-0 lead after 19 minutes. We're trying to double that now. Shani Tarajai set away. He's going to cut inside past the Burnley defender, and he scores. It looks as if it's taken a deflection off the Burnley de uh, defender, sorry, but Shani Tarajai has got his second goal in two episodes after ha having not scored at all before last episode. He's now scored in the Barclays Premier League as well, cutting inside. It's hit the chest there of Ben Mee, the Burnley right back, and it's gone in, and we now lead 2-0 after half an hour. Some good work there from Shani Tarajai into the second half, though, and Hennings is putting the ball into the box for Bedoya. Lovely volley. It's blocked by Riedewald, but it falls the epitome of kindly for Ashley Barnes, who restores some sort of faith for Burnley in this game. It's a fantastic block from Riedewald, but it literally just lands straight at the feet of Barnes with an open goal, and it's now 2-1, and Burnley on the upper hand, or have the upper hand, and talking about hands, a really strong hand there from Kasper Schmeichel to deny uh, the Burnley player an almost certain goal at point-blank range. We're now making some substitutions, though. Jahovic is coming on. I still don't know how to pronounce that properly. I will, I will learn next episode, but Kamano's coming on as well for Shani Tarajai and in the 80th minute Burnley are committing a lot of players forward Sisto's seen a few players free in the area including Drinkwater but also that man Luka Jahovic who off the bench it, this kid is proving to be astonishing I honestly I'm running out of adjectives to describe him we bought him for 2.7 million pounds I think it was and he scored again lovely control and then the half volley and he's won it back here of Garcia we're trying to make it 4-1 he finds the space finds Pione Sisto and the Slovenian striker now has an assist because he gives the ball to Sisto who duly converts for the second time in this game to give us the very flattering scoreline of 4-1 you know when you when you look at how Burnley how well Burnley played in this game but it's a lovely finish from Pione Sisto the typical Sisto goal it has to be he, has to be said sorry he scored many goals like that across the series so far where he's on the where he just he just smashes it across the goalkeeper and into the far corner but that does mean we win the game 4-1 a game I wasn't really expecting to win 4-1 after how well I saw Burnley play that man there Ashley Barnes did uh, get a goal back but it was not enough Sisto getting man of the match Jahovic off the bench with an 8.7 Okazaki with an 8 you didn't even see that he would played but he did play very well Schmeichel with an 8.4 as well and yeah just an opportunity for some of the other players that didn't actually get a chance uh, in the first game of today's episode to uh, get on the score sheet and get some game time including Okazaki including Vardy and Tarajai and Drinkwater and Inla as well but in the background you are now seeing um what is um my my custom tactics uh, in the comments section last episode, a few of you guys said you wanted to see uh, the cu my custom tactics when it comes to formations and the squad. You'll have seen the squad a moment ago. That's the usual starting 11 and bench and reserves that we go for. There you can see the formation is a 4-2-2-2 with two defensive mids, two attacking wingers, if you like, and then two strikers up front. It seems to work pretty well. It's the one that I've used since the start of the series. There you can see the roles as well. The captain is Kasper Schmeichel. Um... Who's the, who's, yeah, uh, Wes Morgan's the usual captain. Because he doesn't play very often, we've given it to Kasper Schmeichel, who's the vice captain in real life. Uh, free kicks are down to Mares. Long free kicks are Perez. Penalties are Mares. And corners are split between Mares and Herman. When it comes to instructions, I don't usually use that many. Uh, the fullbacks are on attacking runs, or always overlap, sorry. Uh, one of the defensive mids is on get forward. That is Arnold. Herman and Mares usually free roam, which gives them a bit more freedom to find areas and pockets of the, of the pitch where where um where where they can they can influence the game and one of the strikers is always on getting behind it's usually Jamie Vardy when he plays because of his electric pace and there you can see our custom tactics as well quick build up play decent emphasis on passing as well chance creation is all left as the default uh, but when it comes to defensive pressure we're slightly higher on that and slightly high on aggression and team width as well so for those guys that wanted to see my tactics those are the tactics we use on them in the majority of games and we'll see whether that tactic can work in today's final game of the episode against Norwich at Carra Road now Norwich have um tripped us up in the past both in Leicester City career mode and also 
in West Ham career mode as well. So I was taking no chances. We rested quite a lot of players for the Burnley game. It did mean we didn't have a very experienced bench. The likes of Olu Kami, Danny Flanagan and Ravel Story, I think, all making it onto the bench. But the first chance of the game there going to Norwich. Andreu uh, there in the second minute putting the ball past the post. It could have been deflected in, though, by Delat. The first chance of, uh, of our game, or the first chance for us in the game, uh, fell to Wissam Ben Yedder trying to curl the ball in uh, from outside the area. But a good save from John Ruddy. But now we're under serious amounts of pressure because one of the Murphy twins down the left-hand side has cut it back there for Thompson. At no point were we under control in that situation, but it's a lovely save from Kasper Schmeichel. Now we go for with a real Donald Embolo in the heart on the half an hour mark and after Norwich really should have taken the lead with that electrifying counter-attack. We have taken the lead uh, thanks to Briel Donald and Bono. I think the assist actually going to Richie Delat of all people. Uh, he doesn't usually get assists, but Briel Donald and Bono does usually get goals. And that is his fourth in the Barclays Premier League this season and probably about seven or eight in all competitions. Max Yarnell trying to get his third in the Barclays Premier League and coming very close there with that long shot. Norwich, though, going forward on the edge of half-time and Tofolo there uh, forcing a very good save out of Kasper Schmeichel. And still in the first half, Max Yarnold's given the ball away and it's allowed Norwich to go forward with Cameron Jerome. But again, Kasper Schmeichel is there to make a fantastic save at the near post. And from the resulting corner, Michael Turner nods it on at the near post. Schmeichel was in no man's land, but thankfully it goes just wide. And that is the last action of the first half. We go in at the break 1-0 up thanks to that man. Real Donald Embolo, one shot and one goal for him. Going into the 49th minute, Kasper Schmeichel has picked up a cross here. Going to put it down to put a through ball forward for Mazuaku, but he's just turned round and moved away. And we've conceded another of these stupid goals. But what I tried to do is attack from the back. I, I, I drop the ball with Kasper Schmeichel and then I play a through ball because it's often a lot more accurate than a pass. But look at Fukra to Mazuaku. He just runs behind the Norwich defender for no apparent reason even though Schmeichel is obviously going to give him the ball. And we end up losing the ball, and it's another comical mistake uh, from, from myself, I suppose, but not really helped by Mazuaku's AI intelligence. Nevertheless, we've got to try and put that behind us and try and get an immediate response. In the 51st minute, Max Yarnold has found Brill on Limbolo! <laughs> Another fantastic long-range strike. Brill Donald Mbolo scoring it this time. We have scored some fantastic goals in recent episodes. And talking about fantastic goals, that was almost one from Gary Hooper trying the overhead kick there uh, with just 10 minutes to go. Now, Andy King, who's off the bench, has just stolen the ball twice off Norwich defenders, looking for his first goal for the club. Uh, in this series, but John Ruddy is up to the task. And now Norwich going forward in the 90th minute with Cameron Jerome, but it's a comfortable save from Kasper Schmeichel at his near post. And we do win the game 2-1 after conceding a calamitous goal. We have recovered with a fantastic strike from Briel Donald Mbolo from a full 20 yards out. Schmeichel gets man of the match. Fantastic ratings as well for Arnold Mbolo and Richie Dalat as well. But uh, wow, what a what a goal to win that game after some shocking play from myself to give Norwich a lifeline. Here is how the table has been affected by today's episode. Arsenal really starting to streak away at the top of the table from ourselves now up into second place. Obviously, we've won all the games in this episode, all the Barclays Premier League games. So we've really stretched away from that battle, for, which was literally just for fourth or fifth that we were, that we were in going into this um Going into this episode, but three wins in a row has uh, really helped us there. And look at Bournemouth up in fifth place. Those guys are really doing a good job. And two of the teams we played today, Norwich and Burnley, are currently occupying the relegation zone. But today's question of the day, I realise it's coming right at the end of the episode. Uh, something you'll have seen quite a lot throughout this season, certainly, is that Richie Delat wants to leave. I'll have an email up in the background telling you about that. That Richie Delat, one of the Leicester originals, wants to leave. And my question of the day, before we get into the transfer window, of course, asking you what players you would like me to sign uh, in the next transfer window, is my question of the day is simply... Should we sell a Leicester original in the shape of Richie Delat and replace him with a young, promising right back, you know, backup right back behind Bruno Perez? So a link to a straw poll will be in the description below asking you whether I should replace Richie Delat in this next transfer window and grant him his wish of leaving the club. Nevertheless, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Leicester City Career Mode. Feel free to hit the likes button if you did enjoy and subscribe if you are new around here as well. Comment below and join the video if you enjoyed it that much.
much, as well as telling me what players you would like me to sign in the next transfer window. They can be from any position, uh, although we do need players in... Well, I'm not entirely sure we need that many players at all, but, you know, it varies depending on the position. But um, leave your suggestions in the comments section below. Nevertheless, it's been a pleasure ranting with you guys today. Have a good day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye.